Give me a minute. Give me a minute. Thank you. <clears throat> I said to get. Uh, could I get you uh, something to? Uh, what can I get you to to eat? I don't mean to be rude, but um, can we just get to the point because this just it feels a little uncomfortable. So. Uh yeah yeah well uh why don't we start with you telling me about Mark. 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 Mark was uh, my first blind date. I met him on this online dating site, and uh, my last boyfriend, he was um, he was an asshole. So I just thought uh, guys from the neighborhood really weren't that good of a match, and what could it hurt, you know? And so Mark was my first blind date, and I don't know, I guess if I knew that blind dates could look like that, I would have gone on a lot more. <laughs> Handsome, huh? Handsome. He was unrefined. I mean, he was good looking without having to try. And he didn't have any of that machismo shit. He just, he just was, you know? And when we met, it felt like time froze. Like we had broken the world or I had forgotten how to breathe. And I mean, I don't look at many people like that. Anyway, um, anyway um, we went to this nice restaurant and I don't even remember what he said. He was, I was, uh, uh, he, his eyes, they were gray and filled with light and talking to him was like watching something move across a mirror or, or catching something in the corner of your eye but not being sure what it was. He was unnerving and, and captivating and... Dinner. You said he took you to a fancy restaurant? Yeah. Yeah, um... He took me to a decent restaurant and I don't even remember what the food tasted like because I was so preoccupied in absorbing everything I could about him. You know, sometimes you have conversations with someone and they're going so well that you wonder, when is it all gonna end? When is the fantasy gonna go away and slip into vibrant dreams? Two scoops of cherry. Passion fruit. Anyway, um, after dinner, Mark invited me dancing. You don't know me, but if you did, you would know that there are two things that I cannot resist, and one of them is dancing. Where did he take you dancing? We didn't actually make it to the dance club. I mean, we went to the place, but we waited in line and decided it was just too much of a hassle. Oh, is that when he invited you to uh, Wayne Tumar's house for a get together? Here I was, thinking that you had no leads on this investigation, or at least that's what you implied on the phone. Apologies, I, I wasn't trying to trick you, all right? Before your call, we, uh, we didn't have very much to go on. We had a call from a, from a Wayne Tumar several nights ago. I had a party at his house and uh, had a strange disturbance the next morning. <laughs> Oh, there's something about uh, candles and feathers. Um, 
you know, he was worried that a serious crime had taken place. Eh, disturbance was accurate. Downright strange probably would have been more so. Um, well, the uh, problem was we didn't really have any evidence that would tell us what exactly happened and to whom until... I called. Mm-hmm. All right. Cards on the table. Before your call, before your, your statement about needing to, to talk after a date, we, we didn't have much to go on. But that statement that gave me the, uh, one of those TV detective hunches, you know? So I started looking, and it turns out that there were several calls from the neighborhood that night. Um, you know, noise disturbances, drunk driving, uh, people making terrible life decisions, it, normal party kind of stuff. But after your call, I started to look at things, cross-reference between those calls and yours. After your call, all the information fit. See, several of the calls mentioned that Mark was in attendance, and since you went on a date with Mark... Clever. Huh. Mark did invite me to a friend's party to see if a rug could still be cut, <laughs> as he said. He was so stupid. What did he do at the party? We talked. We danced a little. We talked some more. I met some people that I knew I'd never see again, and I don't remember. We laughed. We laughed a lot. <laughs> he bet me that I couldn't walk with a full can of beer on my head, and that was the easiest five bucks I've ever made. But honestly, we laughed, and time went easily like that. Did you, did you have a lot to drink? Were you not listening before? I just told you that I walked with a full can of beer on my head. Listen, detective, I know that there are a lot of women who don't pay attention to the decisions they make I am not one of those women. I was with a new man at a strange party, surrounded by strangers. Of course, I didn't drink. I know how to protect myself. But he did offer me one drink. And everything was going so great. I thought, what could one drink hurt? So. If he hurt you in any way, all you have to do is... Detective, I would ask you to refrain from interrupting me. A lot of men have a difficult time listening to the women around them. I'm gonna challenge you to be bigger than your peers. My sincerest apologies. Just go on. Mark was a gentleman until the end. And the end came sooner than I had wanted. And he got me the drink and he brought it over and that's when his phone started ringing. Something with work, something about everything falling apart without him and he had to go and I understood and I just walked out with him, gave him a hug, said goodbye. But I didn't want to leave the party, I guess. I just didn't want to leave the, the feeling or the moment that Mark had left me with. So I went back and I got my drink. And I thought, what could be the harm, you know? And I drank it and it felt like the world had been kicked out from underneath me. And I felt a man touched my shoulder and I looked over and he was standing there wearing a gray hoodie and he touched my face. After that, I don't really remember much. It's maybe some scattered images and honestly, I think that's for the best. I do remember one moment where I was looking down on myself and I couldn't understand why I wasn't able to stop the hate that was being done to my body and I whispered to God for help and then 
then then I was back as if the power had turned back on and my eyes opened and I knew he was still there and so I slowly looked around the room there were candles everywhere and it was like it was church and he was there in the corner doing something muttering to himself and I was laying there naked and I had this symbol painted on me and and then he turned and I I had this primal instinct to run but I stopped it and I just laid there still and I felt him come over to me and I was amazed at how calm at how still I could be and even though my eyes were closed I could feel him smiling proud of what he'd done and then I felt him touch my hair he cut a piece of it off and then what happened next happened fast he turned smelled my hair lamp a sideways glance hands grasping reaching and then the sound of, of wings fluttering a scream and claws tearing flash warm silence angel what happened to your attacker <laughs> You know, detective, I always heard that talking was therapeutic. And I gotta say, I feel a thousand times better. I don't... You know, I asked you to listen, and I think that's a skill that you can really be improved upon. Look, Angel, if, if you hurt, if someone hurt... It seems like there has been a great hurt that has happened. The, the kind of thing that I am required to report. I think listen, you ought to... Listen, you are not required to do shit. I asked you to listen to my story. You listened. Sometimes. But you're... Oh. Our agreement? It's done. But you're... Your attacker. Will never hurt anyone again. You can't just walk away from this. It's not like you can disappear. I know your name. I gave you one of the most common Hispanic names. Do you really think it's mine? What about Mark? Mark. You know, I'm smart. First date means a lot of rules like half-truths. And you know what? Men are really gullible, especially when they're only after that one thing. I can have you arrested. Goodbye, detective. You know, I don't think we'll ever meet again. What about justice? For you. Justice? I don't think you were listening at all. I don't need you. I don't need anyone. I asked God for justice, and he revealed his truth, and I have found a life that I was always missing. So the point? The point is, I am not afraid anymore, and while I am in this city, no woman will ever need to be afraid again, because I am their justice.